Hi, my name is Dave Williams, and I'll be reading a short story from my book, Jumble. Now, this is a collection of 18 stories and a bunch of drawings. The drawings don't have to do with the stories in that they don't show characters or action, anything like that. The drawings are independent. They stand on their own. So I'll be reading this short story called Away from the Orchard. The boy frowned at the apple in his hand, said, Nah, too small, tossed it to the ground, and turned toward another tree in the orchard, saying, Those look much bigger, and went to the supposedly more promising tree. Meanwhile, the supposedly too small apple gasped in surprise of his freedom, when the boy had snapped the stem that had chained the apple to the tree branch. The view had been better up there, however, when the apple had seen the vast population of apples hanging on rows of trees and enjoyed how different the other apples looked, some with a different shade of red than him, some bright green, some golden that seemed to glow when sunlight touched them in the mornings and late afternoons. And... When it was on the tree, the apple had seen beyond the orchard, to a road leading to a field, and houses and trees in the distance. It had dreamed of traveling on that road, to those houses, and seeing, seeing inside them. The trees had described what they heard what was inside the houses, but the apple had difficulty imagining table and sofa, no matter how much the trees described them as best they could because the trees hadn't seen those things, not in the years they had lived, but had overheard humans talk about them. The trees were helpful guides in telling the apples what they were and what their purpose was. The trees had done this every year as blossoms grew into small apples that grew larger and more aware of themselves and their surroundings. The trees said the apples were to be eaten by humans as the humans would chatter about their plans for the fruit. Humans had said, I can't wait to bake these in a pie. So some apples would be eaten that way, and the trees described the pie as best they could. Many apples would be eaten plain, others cooked into a sauce, others cooked even more into a sort of butter, others coated in caramel and stuck with sticks for handles. The apples considered not big enough for baking could be crushed into juice, possibly aged into cider. Hearing about all these possibilities, the apples were fascinated by what might happen to them outside the orchard. They enjoy their lives here, among friends and the multitudes of conversations during the days, although some were irritated by the snoring of many apples at night. They had no knowledge of pain and couldn't feel pain, so they, so they didn't worry about being hurt when teeth bit into them or knives pierced them. The apples eaten at the orchard, mostly by children who couldn't wait until home to taste the fruit, never cried out in pain. Rather, they hummed in a kind of contentment at meeting their purpose. The sensation of the ground was, of course, different than hanging by a stem to a branch. Solidity instead of floating. The view was interesting in fulfilling the apples wondering about the ground. Here was dirt and weeds and apples that had already been given freedom by a powerful wind snapping their stems. The fallen apples had rotted and were covered by bees. The apple had seen a lot of bees as they alighted on blossoms. The bees' buzzing was a special music among the noises around the apple, and it speculated what the bees were saying. Probably something like, Over here is a really good one. The nectar is delicious. Similar to children calling out to each other and their parents about tasty apples. A kinship between children and bees of enthusiasm when finding sweetness in the world. The apple wanted to move. It remembered how the wind would sway it, how it had liked that motion. And when the swaying was strong, 
The apple had thought that time could have arrived when the stem would break and it would fall, as it had seen happen to other apples. Now, the apple tried to repeat that motion without the wind. The apple had done this before, and it had some success in a gentle swaying. That success came again, and shifting its weight more to one side caused the apple to roll a little. Excited, the apple shifted more, side to side, and the rolling continued until the apple bumped against the tree trunk. The tree said, You're a daring one. The apple said, I don't want to just lie here and rot without seeing more. The tree said, Understandable. You apples have such short lives. I don't blame you for wanting to make the most of it. Just be careful. There are lots of dangers. None of the humans in the orchard could hear the conversation. If the humans had stood motionless and cleared their thoughts, they could have heard murmuring, but they would not have comprehended the language. The apple thanked the tree and rolled on. It became better at controlling the direction, so it could avoid the feet of kids running about and the feet of adults who moved slower. The apples on the trees cheered the rolling apple. Keep going! You can do it! May you see the delights away from the orchard. The apple was concentrating so much on avoiding feet that it didn't respond and silently wished the other apples would also witness exotic delights before meeting their purpose. The orchard ended and grass was plentiful and the apple rolled away from the parking lot. When it had been on the tree, the apple had seen cars and trucks arrive and leave. Humans use those machines to move themselves and take away boxes of apples they had picked. The machines were loud and scary, but they seemed a necessity. Perhaps humans became tired of using their legs to move. After a while, the apple became tired. It knew that a car could have taken it farther, but it did not wish for a car to bring it to a house any longer. It wanted to only move under its own control. It rested, loving the softness of grass underneath it and the warmth of sun on it. With new, renewed energy, the apple set forth again, rolling across the field and discovered the huge crowd of trees that didn't bear fruit. One tree at the edge of the forest said, You're a long way from home. What are you doing here? The apple told of its journey with awe in its voice. The affable tree said, Good for you, little one. I hope you explore our woods. But the apple tree was correct about dangers. There are many dangers in the woods. Not so much from humans, but other animals. The apple replied, I have come to the realization that what happens will happen. I had expected to be eaten in the orchard, or brought to a house and cooked. Everything today has been more than what I could have dreamed. The tree said that was a wise position. The nearby trees that had heard the conversation spread the news to other trees. So the forest soon knew of the apple. For several days, the apple rolled in the woods. How different this environment was the fruitless trees having so many leaves that shaded the ground. While the apple missed the sunlight it felt before, it was intrigued by the forest's distinction and by the amount of creatures here. It had seen birds and squirrels and chipmunks before, but never to these numbers. The orchard had been their visiting place, and here was their staying place. The scurrying and chittering and flapping and chirping and singing seemed to be everywhere. Same with insects. The tiny creatures moved with industriousness to complete their missions. Except for curious eyeing by, eyeing by some squirrels and birds, the animals paid hardly any attention to the apple. The trees were more attentive, and they would say, Hello, brave one as the apple neared. And when the apple rested, 
The trees around would tell stories of what they had seen through the years. Stories of winds so mighty they broke thick branches and even caused trees to fall. Stories of deep snow covering the forests when only the evergreens were awake and other trees were in the long sleep that came every year. Stories of old trees crashing to the ground and becoming homes for insects. Of foxes and owls. Of humans lost while hiking. The apple listened and tried to imagine the things in the stories, but it figured its visions were incomplete compared with reality. Snow was a concept it could barely contemplate. The apple loved the stories and the marvelous chaos of trees growing randomly, not in ordered rows as trees grew back in the orchard. The apple always slept at night underneath an arched root or the overhang of a stone, trying to stay out of sight as much as possible. It knew some animals would eat it, and its thoughts often flipped on which ending it preferred, eaten or rotten. Turning rotten, as it had witnessed in past fallen apples, looked to be a sad process, a withering away. At least the apple had seen more than if it had been munched by a human at the orchard. Yet the apple also knew it didn't have much time before it began rotting. With that knowledge, the apple soaked in all the senses it could, rolling on and on. It adored the forest's sights and sounds. A stream provided one of the loveliest sounds it had ever heard, but the apple was terrified of the water. Leaves were carried away by the water. The apple wasn't sure if that would happen to it or if it would sink to the bottom of the stream. Perhaps it could have rolled on the stream's bottom, but the apple chose not to risk it and did not try to cross the stream. The apple was spotted by a fawn who froze, attentive, at the startlement of seeing a moving apple. Cautious, the fawn approached the apple. While the mama deer watched its child and the apple, she didn't feel a threat. The apple stopped and, admi and admired the fawn's white speckled fur. When the fawn's nose touched the apple, the nose was wet and chilly, like the weeds on the forest floor in the morning. The fawn pushed the apple with its nose, sending it rolling a little backward. The apple didn't mind. As the fawn pushed the apple a few more times, the apple relaxed with the motion. It didn't try to roll away. It thought, if this is it, so be it. The fawn sniffed the apple and took the apple into its mouth and chewed. And the apple hummed. <laughs>